Welcome to the quiz show that demands nothing less than perfection. Behind this screen, the four contestants will be hoping their knowledge is flawless because one single mistake could give the game away. This is perfection. Welcome to Perfection, the quiz show where only perfect play is good enough. Behind me are the contestants. We call them the usual suspects. They're in our isolation room. In a moment, we'll find out which one of them has been randomly selected to join me here to play Perfection. They will then face a series of true or false statements. For example, if I said the world's <sighs> ten highest mountains are all in Asia, would you say that's true or false? Well, if you'd said true, I can tell you you'd be right. Answering true or false might seem easy, but if the contestant gets a single answer wrong, their opponents, the usual suspects, will be allowed into the game to capitalise on their mistakes. So you know how the game works. Let's meet the usual suspects. Hi, I'm Jill. I'm from Swindon. I'm a retired PA, and this is my first game. Hello, my name's Stephen. I'm from Lancaster. I'm a housing benefit assessor, and this is my first game. Hello, I'm Rosemary. I live at Walton on the Nays. I'm a civil servant, and this is my second game. Hi, my name's Stephen. I'm from Glasgow. I'm an investment services analyst, and this is my third game. Best of luck to all of you as we find out which one of you has been randomly picked to play perfection. Stephen, it's you. Please come down and join me. Stephen, welcome to the game. Let's find out a little bit more about you. You're a big traveller. You like to do a lot of travelling? Yeah, me and my partner have been to a few places. We went to Tokyo a few years ago. Um, we've been to Jamaica, uh, various places around Europe. So we like to travel whenever we can. Your job gives you opportunity to travel as well? Uh, yep, so I was out in India for four weeks in 2011, and that was just really to help move over some processes out to one of our Chennai offices. That's what used to be called Madras, isn't it? It did, yeah, initially Madras. Changed yeah. to Chennai pretty recently. Yeah, well, it's great to get out there and have a look at the world, though, isn't it? Yeah. Especially the places that are slightly different, rather than just sticking in sort of Europe and things that are more familiar. Yeah, definitely. All right, uh, we'd better get started on the game. Stephen, it's now you versus the usual suspects. They were your teammates. Now they're your enemies. Their job is to stop you from winning the prize fund because your failure will mean that the prize money rolls over to the next game, where one of them could be playing for a bigger total. Now, every game on perfection is worth £1,000. Here's the fantastic news for you. Nobody's won the last eight games, so the prize fund currently stands at £9,000. <laughs> so what are you going to spend £9,000 on if you walk out of here with the cash? Well, as part of that business trip, I was actually able to fly business class. Um, it's a great experience, and I told that to my partner, and she would love to try that. So, likely a holiday flying business class, but probably somewhere we've been, maybe back to Jamaica. I really like that. All right, lovely. Here's how the game works. You'll play three rounds and then a final. Every round that you achieve perfection will make the final easier for you. However, if your performance is anything less than perfect, the usual suspects here will have a chance to step in and steal the round, making the final much harder. More of that to follow later. Usual suspects, we're going to switch you off for now so you can't see or hear anything. Stephen, when they're like this, you can talk through your answers without giving away any vital knowledge, OK? OK. Each round consists of four true or false statements. You'll be answering against the clock. You'll only have 45 seconds, and once you've given an answer, your first answer, it will be locked in. OK. Ready to get started? I am. Then let's play perfection. <laughs> round one, your 45 seconds, starts now. The Great Wall of China was torn down in 1989. False. I believe that's still there at this present day. False. Symphonica is a 2014 album by George Michael. OK, I'm not too sure, but I would say false. I don't think he's released an album this year. False. Yes. Italy's football team wear red shirts in home matches. False, they're blue. False. And finally, Bear Grylls has climbed Mount Everest. He's done a lot of things. I haven't heard them reference to Everest, so I'm going to say false on that one. False, and with time to spare, you've answered all four statements. How was that? Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. I'm Give it a chance? I'm hope so. I'm a little bit unconfident about Bear Grylls. Again, he may have done it and I may not just have heard of it, but the other three, I'm pretty confident of. Before we reveal how well you've done, it's time for us to bring back the usual suspects. So here are the four statements, and next to them are Stephen's answers. Um, Rosemary, how's he done? I think he's got perfection. Do you? Wow, yes. OK. Stephen D, how's your namesake done? I think he's had a really good round there, Nick, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure about C, though. Jill, uh, can you see anything wrong with these answers? I think B could be a wrong answer. All right, Stephen, mixed review there from the usual suspects. It's the moment of truth. You need to have answered all four statements perfectly to have won the round. Let's find out how many are correct. Oh, 
in fact, just two out of four. Certainly not perfection. And as a result, you've let your enemies use your suspects into the game. If they can identify the two answers to change, then they could achieve perfection. Well, A is definitely right. It's yeah. false. I, I think they're trying to lull us into thinking about the um, Berlin Wall, which was definitely 1989. Yes. So, yeah. Um, um, D, sorry, yeah. No, go on. No, I don't think Bear Grylls has climbed Mount Everest, so I think that's, yeah, I think that one's right. And I do seem to remember that George Michael has recently made an album with a concert orchestra or philharmonic orchestra. Is it B and C from false to true? Is that what mm. we're saying? We'll go B to true. B changes from false to true, and you need one other. C. Too true, please. And C changes from false to true, leaving A and D as answered by Stephen. OK, usual suspects, let's find out what the correct answers are. The Great Wall of China was torn down in 1989. True or false? Yes, it is false. And you're quite right, Stephen. D, in 1989, it was the Berlin Wall that was torn down. Symphonica is a 2014 album by George Michael. True or false? True, quite right. Well done, Jill. You sort of led the usual suspects in the right direction there. Italy's football team wear red shirts in home matches. True or false? That's false, usual suspects. Uh, they usually wear blue shirts at home, in actual fact. Italy, can you still achieve perfection at home? Let's uh, deal with that last one. Bear Grylls has climbed Mount Everest. Is that true or false? Yes, in actual fact, it is true. Let's have a look at your final board, Stephen. These six blank spaces need to be filled with subject categories. Here are your final round category options, starting with Richard Branson, running through Top Gear, The Atmosphere, and onto Popeye, with many more in between. Now, had you achieved perfection, you'd now have the opportunity of adding two categories of your choice to the board, but because neither side won the round, the two categories that were due to be chosen will now be carried over to the next round, meaning four categories will be on offer then. Usual suspects could do better, I think, is the score report. We'll see you later. <laughs> Off they go. Uh, right, now they've gone, we can have a little chat about those categories, Stephen. Um, which two will you be choosing first? Uh, World Cup, to start with. Mm -hmm. Batman. OK, and two you're quite keen to avoid? Berkshire and the Mercury Prize. There's four categories available in the next round. This will be a good one to win, yes? Yes, definitely. OK, let's play round two. <laughs> Your 45 seconds starts now. In Scotland, a bothy is a small hut or cottage. That's true. True. Utah is known as the beehive state. I'd have to take a guess with that one, but I'll say it's false. False. Richard the Lionheart died in France. I'll say that's false. False. And finally, the Ten Tours is an endurance event on Dartmoor. We'll say that's true. True. And again, with plenty of time to spare, you've answered all four statements. Felt like there were a couple of tough ones in there for you. Definitely were. Yeah, there's one or two guesses, but we'll see how we go. Right, let's have a chat with the usual suspects then. So here are the four statements, and next to them are Stephen's answers. Uh, let's start off with Stephen D this time. Has he achieved perfection? Not quite, no. I think he's had a pretty good round. Um, I'm a bit unsure about A, though. What do you think, Jill? No, I'm happy with A, Nick. Uh, C would be the one that I would probably change. Rosemary? Maybe D is false. I've never heard of a 10 Tours endurance event. A mixed bag there, but, but if you take them all together, then they think you've got most of them wrong. Uh, <laughs> let's find out the truth. How many are correct? <laughs> Two out of four is not bad, but it's not good either, to be fair. Uh, it's right in the middle. And as a result, you've let the usual suspects in. If they can identify the two answers to change, they can steal the round. Off you go. Which ones would you change? B and C. B and C? Yes. Are you and... fairly certain on A, then? Yes. Yeah, OK. Yes. Fair enough, then. And Stephen? B, yeah. I mean, I used to live in America. I think I do vaguely remember that um, Utah was the BI state, yeah. Well, I know Richard Lionheart died in Jerusalem. Oh. He didn't. He, he died during the Crusades. He, he's buried in France. He didn't die ah, in France. Right. I see. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. So, okay. um, Good. Yeah. C is correct, being false. So we'll change I the 10 to, to, to false and B, B to true. 
B changed from false to true. And D pleased to false. And D from true to false, leaving A and C as answered by Stephen. All right, usual suspects, let's find out what the correct answers are. In Scotland, a body is a small hut or cottage. True or false? Yes, it's true. Utah is known as the Beehive State. True or false? Yes, that is also true. Apparently due to the work ethic of the people from Utah. Richard the Lionheart died in France. True or false? That's Ooh. actually true. So I'm afraid as a result of that usual suspects, you can't achieve perfection. I wonder whether you can still achieve perfection at home. Uh, yes, uh, died and buried in France. The Ten Tours is an endurance event on Dartmoor. Is that true or false? Yes, that's absolutely true. Let's see the final board. It's uh, a virtual desert, to be honest, with no one willing to win a round. So what are we going to do with the four categories? We're going to carry them over into round three. All six categories will be on offer in the final round. Usual suspects, we'll see you in a moment. Well, this will be a good one to win, wouldn't it? Definitely. Stephen, let's play round three. <laughs> Your 45 seconds start now. Maybe this time is a song from the film Cabaret. True. True. Kappa is a letter in the Greek alphabet. That's true. True. Inferno is a work by the poet Dante. Definitely link the two together, so we'll say that's true. True. And finally, Alice Springs is a town on Tasmania. I'm going to go false. False. And again, with plenty of time to spare, you've answered all that. You don't hang around much, do you? I don't. You're going on the theory that gut, gut instinct. Definitely. I think you can uh, think about it too much and maybe convince yourself of the incorrect answer. By Talk yourself out long. of it. All right, before we reveal how well you've done, let's have another chat with the usual suspects. So here are the four statements, and once again, Stephen's answers. Jill, has he achieved perfection? Yes, Nick, I think he has. Oh, Stephen D, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's a pretty good round, Nick. Um, slightly unsure about A, though. That might be false. Rosemary? B, C and D are definitely correct. I'm not sure whether A is actually true, though. OK, Stephen, the moment of truth. Let's find out how many are correct. Congratulations, Stephen. You have achieved perfection. <laughs> Let's have a look at those in more detail, shall we? Uh, maybe this time is a song from the film Cabaret. That's absolutely true. Kappa is a letter in the Greek alphabet, and that is also true. Inferno is a work by Dante, and that is true. Dante's Inferno. Most people have heard of that. Alice Springs is a town on Tasmania. You said false. False. And it is? False, because it's in Northern Territories, actually, on mainland Australia. Right. Let's have a look at your final board. As I said, a virtual desert, very much like Northern Territories, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but now, because you won that round, you get to decide all six categories to go into the final round. Off you go. So we'll start with the World Cup, please. The World Cup goes into the final. I'd like Batman. Batman. I would like the atmosphere. The atmosphere goes in, or halfway. Richard Branson. Richard Branson goes in as well. Planets. Let's put planets in. And finally... I would go with Popeye. Popeye. We now know our six final categories. They are World Cup, Batman, The Atmosphere, Richard Branson, Planets and Popeye. He did very well there, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah really, really, good really well. well. Yeah. Yeah. And he's in danger, I think, as he's choosing all his own categories. But we'll find out. See you a little bit later. Uh, so, you can't do better than choose all your own categories, can you? No. With £9,000 to play for, it is time to play the final. <laughs> Stephen, this is your important final. If you could achieve perfection, you could be leaving with a prize fund of £9,000. Uh, if you fail, you could be leaving with nothing, which would be great news for the usual suspects, as one of them could be playing for a rollover of £10,000 on the next game. Let's play the final round. <laughs> Stephen, here are your final six categories. You must answer all six statements correctly if you want to win the £9,000. Think carefully, there's no time limit, but once you've given an answer, your first answer, it will be locked in. Are you ready? Yes. Then let's reveal your first statement. World Cup. <laughs> Sven Goran Eriksson managed the team at the 2010 World Cup. Don't remember Sven's name being mentioned. That I didn't watch all of the games. I'm going to say false. False. Batman. Bruce Wayne's father is called 
John Wayne. Ah. Seems so obvious to be considering it to be John Wayne, you know, the Western actor. I'm going to say false. False? Yeah. The atmosphere. Argon makes up about 1% of the Earth's atmosphere. I'm going to say true. True? Yeah. Richard Branson. Richard Branson has a net worth of over £40 billion. Pounds. OK, let's try and look it out. I'm going to say that's true. Yeah. True? Yeah. Planets. The great dark spot is found on Neptune. It's going to, to be a guess with that one. Again, I'm going to say it's true, though. True. And finally, Popeye. Peepi is a nephew of Popeye. It's not familiar to me. I watched Popeye quite a few times when I was younger. Um, I'm going to say false. False. And with that, you've answered all six statements, and those answers are locked in. If there's one single mistake, you leave with nothing. So which ones are you worried about? A, to an extent. So I know he was still managing at the time. I just can't remember seeing a game where Sven Goran Eriksson was the manager of a team in that World Cup. Mm -hmm. um, B, actually, as well, it was not the question I was hoping for. I have watched all of the recent Batman films. Uh, the Great Dark Spot, again, is a bit of a guess. Um, and Pipe, I've never heard of Pipe, so that's why it went false. OK, so it's kind of 50-50 board. It is, definitely, yeah. All right, let's bring back the usual suspects and see what they have to say. Right, you can now see the final six statements. The next to them are Stephen's answers. Stephen, your answers are now locked in and you can't change them by yourself. But if you think you may have made a mistake, you can unlock the board with the help of the usual suspects. This will, of course, come at a cost. Yeah. So, Stephen, who would you like to hear from first? Joe, please. I think you've done terribly well with this, actually. Uh, there is one that I think I would change, but the rest I think you have correct. Does that mean you'd like to come down and help for some of the £9,000, Jill? <laughs> it would be very tempting, yes, it would. How much would it take, Jill, if you were wanting to come down, just out of interest? Um, I... Th what is it? 9000 isn't it? Yes. So I would say 50-50. Um, okay. I'll come back to you, Jill. Thank okay. you. OK. Rosemary, please. I think you've got one wrong but I am not confident enough to come down and assist you. Okay. So I'd, I'll miss this one, if you don't mind. Thank you, anyway. Stephen? I think you've had a pretty good final there, okay. but I think one is definitely wrong, okay. and I think one is possibly wrong that we might need to talk about. OK. Um, it's my first game. £9,000 is a lot of money. OK. I'd be prepared to come down for... 5,000 for me and 4,000 for you. OK, so you've got two offers, effectively. £5,000 to come down and help you from Stephen. £4,500 to come down and help you from Jill. Or, indeed, they could be bluffing and you could do this all on your own. What do you think? Stephen, what about 4,000 to you, 5,000 to me? <laughs> As you said, if you think I've had a very good round and there's only one question that you're looking to change, the second one we can obviously debate between us. Yes, let's go for that then, Excellent. Stephen. Yeah. Joe, thank you for your offer. Stephen, yeah. please come down. OK, so for £4,000 of the £9,000 on offer, Stephen D, please come down and join Stephen. <laughs> OK, Stephen, uh, you've asked Stephen D for help, so it's a brace of Stephen's. Uh, if you achieve perfection, it will cost you £4,000 of your prize fund of £9,000. Stephen D, uh, you've now forfeited your chance to play in the next game. This is your only shot at winning perfection. I wonder whether you've made the right decision. We're about to find out. Here are the final round statements. All six answers are now unlocked. Stephen D, which answers do you want Stephen to change? I'm looking at D and I'm just trying to work out how many uh, zeros there are in a billion. You know, does it seem... It's nine zeros. It's nine zeros. Yeah, so, so it's a thousand million. Yeah. Do you think that's too much? That's an awful lot, isn't it? Yeah. If it, was, if it was a net worth of over 40 million, yeah, I'd then go that, for that's it. That's a zero, but obviously. 40 but... billion does sound... Yeah. Do you know what? Let's change that one to false, please. You want to change okay. D yeah. from true to false, please? Yeah, yeah that's... <laughs> and what was the other one you were thinking about? The other one is E, about... Um, that spot. So that... Neptune. How certain are not... you on that So one? That, that was, I guess, so I've heard of it before. I've not yeah. heard of it in reference to I'm a specific just planet. If it... Neptune is one of those planets that's not that well known. Is it Mars? Is it not Mars? The great dark spot. 
Do you know what? I know Mars is the red planet, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, do you know what? I'm convinced, I'm convinced it's not now. Let's make it false, please. <laughs> Eat it false. Again, I don't want to... It's OK. Know, nah, I've given the decision on my own anyway, but obviously yeah. with your guidance. E change E to false. Please. E yeah. changes from true to false. Yep. Those are the only two yeah. we're changing. OK. Lock the rest in. I'm OK with that yeah. if you are, yeah. yeah. All right, lock the rest in. Your answers are now logged in. £9,000 at stake, £5,000 to Stephen, £4,000 to Stephen D. Six answers away. Let's find out if you've achieved perfection. Tell you what, let's start with the ones that you've changed, first of all, shall we? Because we can find out straight away whether it was a good idea to get uh, Stephen D to come down and join you, Stephen. D, Richard Branson, has a net worth of over £40 billion. Uh, Stephen D thought this was too much, and after much deliberation, Stephen, you came to the conclusion that he was right, so you changed to false. Is that true or false? Well it is false. <laughs> uh, he's worth approximately 3.5 billion, which is still a lot of money. Off to a good start and definitely worth having Stephen D come down and join you. Uh, so the next one is a great dark spot is found on Neptune. Now, Stephen, originally you said this was true and after much discussion with Stephen D, you decided to change this one as well to false. So the great dark spot is found on Neptune. Is that true or false? It's true, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's true, which means you can't achieve perfection and you won't be going home with the £9,000 between you. Uh, I wonder whether you can still achieve perfection at home. Let's carry on through, shall we? Peep Eye is a nephew of Popeye. Uh, you said this was false. Is that true or false? Weirdly, that's true. <laughs> so, there you go. Up to the top, Sven Goran Eriksson managed the team at the 2010 World Cup. You said false. Is that true or false? It's true. He actually managed Cote d'Ivoire. Oh, my God. Was it Ivory, Ivory Coast? Coast is his name. Yeah, it was. Bruce Wayne's father is called John Wayne. Uh, well, you said this was false because, obviously, John Wayne was the cowboy actor. Yeah. Uh, it's true or false? Yes, you're quite right. That was false. Thomas Wayne is his father. Argon makes up about 1% of the Earth's atmosphere. Is that true or false? It is true, uh, so that was very well done there. Well, in the end, bad news for you means good news for the usual suspects as the prize fund rolls over to the next game, where one of you can be playing for a total of £10,000. <laughs> Thank you both for playing. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Yeah, yep, been great fun. Yeah. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, let's hear it for Stephen and Stephen D. <laughs> It's now time to meet the next usual suspects hoping to play perfection today. New usual suspects, please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Kevin from Ringmer in East Sussex, and I'm a human resources consultant. Hi, I'm Joe. I'm originally from Burton on Trent, and I'm a teaching student. Welcome, Kevin and Joe, and best of luck to all of you as we now find out which one of you has been randomly selected to play perfection. Rosemary, it's you. Please come down and join me. Rosemary, welcome to the game. Thank you very much. Let's find out about you. You once went to meet the Queen? Oh, that was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. As a civil servant, I had the opportunity to apply to go to the garden party, and I was lucky enough to be chosen. So is it really like posh sandwiches and things? That oh, it's I think? wonderful. It? It's <laughs> it's something that you would just never, ever forget. Well, it's unlikely to ever happen to me, I can tell you. Oh, they, 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 you don't well, know. they won't let the likes of me into a royal garden <laughs> well, party. You, might never, well, you could go for another reason. Yeah. They um, might need some work done. Yeah, well, yes, maybe <laughs> I can do some work, yeah. <laughs> the tradesman's entrance, as they say. All right, listen, Rosemary, we better get on with the show. Yes. It's now you versus the usual suspects. They were your teammates, they're now your enemies. Uh, here's the good news, nobody's won the last nine games. No, I know. The prize fund currently stands at £10,000. <laughs> so what would you spend the money on? £10,000. I've got my eye on a cabriolet. A little, a little yes, convertible, a eh? convertible cabriolet, yes. Very, very... I'd like that. I really would nice. like that. Yes. Drive along with the wind in your hair. Oh, yes. Yes, and I live in the right part of the country, so I can do that. We have enough wind down in Essex. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, best of luck. Three Thank rounds you. of the vinyl to come. Use your suspects. I've got to switch you off for now, so you can't see or hear anything. But as soon as Rosemary makes a mistake, you'll be back in the game. Rosemary, when they're like this, you can talk through your answers without giving away any vital knowledge, OK? Yes. Are you ready to get started? I am, indeed. Then let's play perfection. <laughs> Round one, your 45 seconds starts now. 
Bill Nighy was an early member of the Bay City Rollers. Oh, false. False. Agatha Christie wrote the play 12 Angry Men. False. False. The Glyndebourne Festival takes place in Essex. False. False. And finally, Errol Brown famously played Robin Hood on film. False. False. And with time to say, you've answered all four statements. Uh, C, your answer false was very tentative. D, your answer false was with a laugh. Is he not the lead singer in Hot Chocolate? Well, I can't say anything at the oh, moment, right. uh, but uh, we're about to find out. I'll tell you what, before we find out how many you've got right, let's switch on the usual suspects and see what they have to say. So, here are the four statements, and uh, next to them are Rosemary's answers. Jill, how has she done? Well, my opinion is she's done terribly well. I think she may easily have achieved perfection, yes. Joe, what do you think? Well, I think A sounds, sounds a bit quirky. It sounds something that might be true, so I'd possibly change that one to true. You might think that's plausible. Kevin, what do you think? Yeah. I don't actually concur with uh, Jill. I think Rosemary's had a blinder of a first round. I think that's perfection there. Rosemary, in the moment of truth, you need to have answered all four statements perfectly to have won the round. Let's find out how many are correct. <laughs> Congratulations, Rosemary. You have achieved perfection. That's a cracking start, isn't it? Let's go through those in a bit more detail. Bill Nighy was an early member of the Bay City Rollers. You said false, and of course it is false. He just wasn't. Agatha Christie wrote the play 12 Angry Men. True or false? Yes, it's false. Reginald Rose wrote 12 Angry Men. The Glyndebourne Festival takes place in Essex. Weren't sure about this, but you went with false, and of course it is false. It's down in Sussex. In actual facts. I didn't think Kleinborn was in Essex. You, well, you, that's where you're here from, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so you know about it, presumably. Uh, Errol Brown famously played Robin Hood on film. You said false, and it is false, because as you said, Errol Brown is the lead singer of Hot Chocolate. <laughs> it was Errol Flynn yes. who played Robin Hood on film. Well, Rosemary, as a result of that perfect performance, you've made winning the prize fund a bit easier. Let's have a look at the final board. This is your final board. These six blank spaces need to be filled with subject categories. Here are your final round category options, starting with the Lego movie, running through boy bands, Lassie, and onto European rivers with many more in between. Now, because you won the round, you've earned the right to choose the two categories to add to the board. So which two would you like? Um, statues. Statues goes into the final, and... I'll try Paul Newman. Paul Newman goes into the final. Thank you very much. Use your suspects. We'll see you in the next round. In the meantime, we need to switch you off. Cheerio. Right, now they've gone, we could have a little chat about that list. Pick me two that you really don't want them to select for you. The Lego movie. Mm-hmm. And? Boy bands. And the next two you'll be selecting? San Francisco, probably, and... I think I'll try Secret Services. All right, Rosemary, you made a great start to the game. If you can repeat that every time, you'll sail through this and walk home with £10,000. Oh, <laughs> please. Let's play round two. Your 45 seconds starts now. France qualified for the first Cricket World Cup. I'll say false. False. Bill Collins played the drums in Genesis. True. True. El Cid was a famous Mexican leader. No, he was a famous Spanish leader, so that's false. False. And finally, William Shakespeare created the character Humpty Dumpty. Well, he never did when I was at school, so I'll say that's false. False. And with that, you've answered all four statements. Good round? Yes. Another perfect round, do you think? I'm not 100% certain about A. Well, we don't have to mention that to the usual suspects. We'll no, let them work no. it out for themselves yes. one way or another. Let's have a chat with them and see what they think. Here are the four statements, and next to them are Rosemary's answers. Joe, what do you think this time? Has she achieved perfection? Um, I think she's done rather well, Nick. Um, the only one I would possibly question is C. Kevin? I'll concur with Joe, actually. I would have thought that it was uh, pretty good, but, yeah, C, bit of a question mark over that, Rosemary. Jill, can you help us out? No, Nick, I think, once again, Rosemary's hit perfection. Uh, a mixed bag from the usual suspects, but a possibility of perfection, they say. Let's find out how many are correct.
Congratulations, Rose Lee and the team for Fetching again. Thank you. You're on fire at the moment, Rose Lee. Yes, like, uh, that's burning up the screen. Let's have a look, shall we? France qualified for the first Cricket World Cup. You said they, you thought they weren't very fond of cricket. Uh, and you were right, because it is false. They've never played in any no, Cricket World Cup. I didn't think they had. Phil Collins played the drums in Genesis. You said this was true, and of course it is true. El Cid was a famous Mexican leader. You said this was false, and it is false because he was a very famous Spanish yes. leader. Well, actual fact, Castilian. Castilian, yes. Yeah, going back a bit, but uh, nonetheless in what is technically Spain these days. And finally, uh, William Shakespeare created the character Humpty Dumpty. You said not when you were at school, not when anybody was at school. <laughs> it is, of course, false. Let's see the final board. Remember, you're heading towards a £10,000 prize fund, and because you won that round, you get to choose the next two categories. So, what do you fancy? San Francisco. San please. Francisco goes in, and... Um, I'll try Secret Services. And Secret Services goes into the final as well. Very well played, Rosemary. Uh, usual suspects. Uh, you're not getting much of a look in here, are you? No, no. sadly. <laughs> yeah, she's running away with it. I wonder whether she'll run away with the £10,000 at the end. In the meantime, we're going to switch you off. We'll see you in round three. Well, I'm, I'm loath to chat for any length of time here because you're doing so well. I want to keep that vibe rolling along. Should we get on with it? Yes, let's Let's, let's play let's round do. three. <laughs> Your 45 seconds starts now. The smallest bone in the body is in the foot. True. True. The TV series Merlin was set in the 25th century. False. False. The Twilight books are set in a town called Knives. I'll say false. False. And finally, Carl Pilkington managed Aston Villa in 2014. I'll say false. False. And with good use of the time to have a think about those, uh, you've answered all four. You sounded slightly less confident that time around. Mm. Yeah? I've heard of the Twilight books, but I've never read them and I've never watched the films. Carl Pil Pilkington, I can't remember his name being mentioned in the news at all when they come to the sports. Okay. But it's in the lap of the gods. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, let's find out what the usual suspects think. So once again, here are the four statements. The next of them are Rosemary's answers. Kevin, you get to start us off this time. Is it perfection again? It's not far off, Nick. I think I would just probably need question mark uh, B. OK, Joe? Congratulations, Rosemary. I think you have got perfection there because Carl Pilkington definitely did not manage Aston Villa. He is the idiot abroad. Of course, he couldn't do something like that. <laughs> Joe, what do you think? Um, I think I would change A, because I think that is false. Interesting. Rosemary, the moment of truth, you need to have answered all four statements perfectly to have won the round. Let's find out how many correct, and if you've got perfection again. <laughs> Just three out of four. Almost perfection, but not quite close yeah. enough. And as a result, the usual suspects have a chance to steal the round. Only if you can identify the one answer that you need to change. Do you know anything about the, the Twilight books? Twilight, um, it's not called Knives, it's called Forks. Okay. Oh, wow, so. yeah. <laughs> and Merlin was Merlin. not set in the 20th century. No, so it followed so the Wizard So A Merlin. is the incorrect one. So let's go so, with A. Yes, yeah, so Have go we? with A. Yes. Uh, we'd like to change A, please, Nick. We'd like to make that false. A changes from true to false, leaving B, C and D as answered by Rosemary. Thank you very much, usual suspects. Let's find out what the correct answers are. The smallest bone in the body is in the foot. Is that true or false? No, it's false. It's in the ear, in actual fact. You knew that, Joel, did you? That's yeah. Style. Yeah, there you go. The TV series Merlin was set in the 25th century. True or false? Yes, of course, that's false. Set in the Dark Ages, really, a sort of post-Roman Arthurian Britain. Uh, the Twilight books are set in a town called Nimes. True or false? Uh, false, and as Joe says, set in a town called Forks. And finally, Carl Pilkington managed Aston Villa in 2014. True or false? Yes, it's false. Congratulations, as usual suspects. You have achieved perfection.
Uh, he's a TV personality. He does a programme called Idiot Abroad and a friend of Ricky Gervais, mm -hmm. who sets him weird things to do, which might in the future include managing Aston Villa. You, you never know. <laughs> oh dear, Rosemary, the usual suspects have succeeded where you failed and they've stolen the round. Usual suspects, you now have your only opportunity to make Rosemary's chances of winning the prize fund that little bit harder. Let's see the final board. Currently occupied by four categories chosen by Rosemary, but because you won the last round, usual suspects, you get to choose the last two. So which ones do you want? Um, what do you think? The Lego movie, that's quite a recent movie that's come out, and obviously Unlike... it's based on Lego. Yes, so do you think, think... it's... Mm. I'm not sure I about you, know but... Much about that one. I, I don't think, think she so. would know no, much no, about okay, that one, fine, no. All right. What about folklore? Fo folklore, yes. Mm. It's a bit... Lego folklore? It's a bit obscure, would we yeah, say? It's... OK, yeah. so, Nick, we're going to choose uh, the Lego movie, please. The and... Lego movie goes into the final and... And folklore. And folklore, thank you yeah. very much. Uh, you. We now know our six final categories. They are statues, Paul Newman, San Francisco, Secret Services, the Lego movie and folklore. OK, guys, well played. Time to switch you off for the final time. Well, you didn't want the Lego movie, did you? Not really, no. <laughs> no. Uh, folklore? Yeah, I, I probably... Got to be another chance for that. Well, depends yes, what the question is, I suppose, well, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. All right, Rosemary, for ten thousand pounds, it's time to play the final. <laughs> Rosemary, this is the all-important final. If you can achieve perfection, you could be leaving with a prize under ten thousand pounds. If you fail, you'll be leaving with nothing, which would be great news for the usual suspects, as one of them could be playing for a rollover of eleven thousand pounds on the next game. Let's play the final round. <laughs> Rosemary, here are your final six categories. Now, you must answer all six statements correctly if you want to win the £10,000. Think carefully. There's no time limit. But once you've given an answer, your first answer, it will be locked in. Are you ready? Yes. Let's reveal your first statement. Statues. <laughs> the Venus de Milo only has one hand. True. True. Paul Newman. <laughs> Paul Newman won five Oscars. I'll say false. False. San Francisco. <laughs> the Tenderloin is an area of San Francisco. I'll say false. False. Secret Services. <laughs> the letters MI in MI5 stand for military intelligence. True. True. The Lego movie. Will Ferrell voiced Lord Business in the Lego movie. I'll say true. True. And folklore. <laughs> Black Shuck is a ghostly, man-eating Welsh badger. Oh, goodness. I'll say false. <laughs> false. And with that, you've answered all six statements. Remember, if there is one single mistake, you leave with nothing. So which ones are you unsure of? Black Shock. I've never heard of a man-eating Welsh badger. And I keep on thinking Tenderloin in South San Francisco. I would have thought Tenderloin would have been somewhere where they raised cattle, not San Francisco. OK, well, let's bring back the usual suspects and see what they have to say. So you can now see the final six statements, and next to them are Rosemary's answers. Rosemary, your answers are now locked in, and you can't change them by yourself. But if you think you may have made a mistake, you can unlock them with the help of the usual suspects. This will, however, come at a cost. Rosemary, who would you like to hear from first? Jill, please. I, I've got one which is nagging at the back of my mind, which I believe is incorrect. There's one I'm not sure about. And so does that mean that you'd like to come and join in or not? £10,000 in the pot? Yes, I know. It's a huge amount of money, Nick, and it's very tempting, but I don't... I can't... No, I can't bring that answer to mind at the moment. So you're saying you're not available for selection? I am saying that, yes. OK, so Jill's ruled herself out. OK. Uh, Kevin? Rosemary, you played a blinder. Uh, the final set of questions don't sit happy with me, unfortunately. Uh, I've got a, a couple of areas of, of question marks there, which I don't think I'd be of much use to you on this time round. So, for that reason, uh, you're on your own, sweetie. OK. Not necessarily. Uh, we're certainly without you, Kevin, who, yeah. having ruled yourself out. But, then, yeah. you know, you've still got Joe to talk to. Joe, you? what do you think? There's two that I believe you have got incorrect, but the rest of them, oh, I'm a little bit... Hazy on, I'm not particularly sure. 
So does that mean that you won't be coming down or we will be? I think it's my first game. I think I'm going to stay up here. So just to be clear, even with £10,000 in the pot, and I'm not spending your money for you here, Rosemary, but no matter how much of the £10,000 was lobbed at you at this stage, none of you are prepared to come down and join in. Indeed. That's right. It's, it's too much of a risk. Yes? Yes. Lovely. Thank you very much. Well, Rosemary, the usual suspects aren't prepared to play ball. You are on your own. £10,000 at stake, six answers away. Let's find out if you've achieved perfection. Well, I'm interested to know, Kevin, the two that you thought were incorrect, which two? Uh, C. Yeah. Uh, and uh, F. C and F you yes. thought were correct. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Joe, what did you think? I also was a bit unsure on F. That's one I thought. And then A, I always thought the Venus de Milo didn't have any arms at all. Interesting. Joe, what do you think? C is the one that I'm querying. So they're saying A, C and F. Let's start with the others and then come back to those and see whether you needed their help or not. B, Paul Newman won five Oscars. You said this was false. Is it true or false? It is false. Very well done. <laughs> he actually won three in total, uh, one for acting and two honorary Oscars that you won as well, but not five. So very well done there. Uh, C was another one that they wanted. D, the letters MI in MI5 stand for military intelligence. You said this was true. Is that true or false? Yes, it is true. Very well done. <laughs> e. This was one you didn't want. Uh, the, but uh, nonetheless, Will Ferrell voiced Lord Business in the Lego movie. You said this was true. Is it true or false? <laughs> Very well done. Halfway to the cash. All on your own. You didn't need their help. Black Shuck is a ghostly man-eating Welsh badger. Interestingly, some of the usual suspects thought you should have changed this to true. We need this to turn red for you to stay on course for the money. Is it true or false? Yes, it is false. <laughs> it's uh, said to be uh, a giant black dog or a ghostly black dog that sort of roams the wilds of East Anglia, in actual fact. Let's go back to the top. The Venus de Milo only has one hand. Now, you said this was true. Uh, Joe thought that this might be false. We need this to turn green. If it turns green, you are one away from the £10,000. I think Joe's right. Oh, do you? Yes, I do. I had this vision of her hand doing this, but I think he's right. I don't think she does actually have any hands. Let's find out. You said true. Is it true or is it false? It is false, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very frustrating, that. But by the same token, if you had invited Joe to come down and he'd accepted your offer to come down for some money, uh, then he would have got you to say that Black Shuck was a ghostly man-eating Welsh badger, so you wouldn't have been any better off. Um, let's do the last one, because maybe you can still achieve perfection at home. Uh, the Tenderloin is an area of San Francisco. You said false. Is it true or false? Actually, true. Uh, named after an area in New York oh, of the wow. same name, by all accounts. These are suspects. Great news for you. The price one rolls over to the next game, where one of you could be playing for a total of £11,000. <laughs> Rosemary, you failed to achieve perfection in the final, which means you go home with nothing, but you did achieve perfection in two rounds and three out of four of your other round. I think you played a very good game. You should be Thank very, very proud of that. I hope you've enjoyed playing. I have very, very much. It Do was you know, great. We've enjoyed having you here. Let's hear it for Rosemary, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Well, that's all we have time for. Please join us next time when our usual suspects have the chance to play again, this time for £11,000. But remember, on this show, we'll only pay for perfection. Goodbye.